So knowing what Docker is and how to use it has sort of become a prerequisite for being a full stack developer. But Docker is a pretty complex tool. It containerizes your application and lets it run kind of like its own virtual machine. Even seasoned veterans sometimes need a refresher on best practices. Hi, my name is Caleb from Semitex, a full stack monitoring tool. If you want to become a full stack developer, here are 10 common Docker mistakes that you will definitely want to avoid. Mistake number one, mindlessly using latest in Dockerfile. A Docker file is a text file that lists the available commands for Docker to use while building an image. Think of it like the blueprints to a building that lists out which materials are needed. When making a Docker file, it can be very tempting to always pull the latest version of a dependency. For us humans, this just makes sense. Newer is generally better. But for apps that are dependent on certain quirky aspects of an older version, you could end up with a broken app the next time that your dependency updates. I mean, isn't this kind of the whole point of a Docker container? Docker is made to keep your app's dependencies exactly how it needs them to be. So to keep this from happening, it is best practice to always list your dependency's specific version, not just the latest version. This will help make your image immutable and timeless. Mistake number two, running multiple services in a single container. Docker allows you to containerize and compartmentalize your code's infrastructure, but it's also taught as best practice to keep every service that your application uses in its own container. Yes, there are exceptions to this rule, but by and large, keeping one service per container makes life so much easier. It makes horizontally scaling your application easier, it makes building much faster, and your logs will be much more concise. And the whole debugging process just becomes a whole lot less of a hassle. Speaking of logging and debugging with Docker, mistake number three, not setting up log rotation in Docker. By default, Docker does not limit the size of your log file. This can take up massive amounts of space on your host machine. Not setting up log rotation can lead to slow performance or even complete crashes. So yeah, you're gonna wanna set up a limit on your log's file size and send your logs off somewhere else for storage and analysis. For a fuller explanation of this unique characteristic, check out this video here. Mistake number four, expecting logs from Docker to be multi-lined. In the world of containers, logging can get really complicated really fast. Why? Because logs from all of your apps running in containers get emitted to the same output, standard out. To help organize your Docker logs, you should use an agent like rsyslog, fluentd, or Semitex Docker agent. Semitex is unique in that it can parse multi-line logs out of the box, as well as apply custom multi-line patterns. It also monitors your logs, infrastructure, and does alerting. Check it out for free via the link in the description below. Mistake number five, freaking out when the Docker syslog driver times out. Don't freak out, the Docker syslog driver has a few quirks, and that's okay, that's what makes it special. Using Docker syslog driver with TCP or TLS is a reliable way to deliver your logs. However, the syslog logging driver requires a TCP connection to the syslog server when a container starts up. If this connection can't be established at the container start time, the container start fails and an error message will look something like this. So just know that that is a common thing that happens and it might not be your fault. Mistake number six, using add instead of copy. When building a Docker file, both add and copy are useful commands to copy files from a source onto an image. This is a great and necessary thing to do, but there is a difference between add and copy. The add command, which is much older than the copy command, takes a source, which can be an external URL and a destination, and then auto extracts the tar files from that source. The copy command is more simplistic. It takes a local source, i.e. not a URL, and copies it into a destination. So why not just use an add command, you might ask? Well, add does a lot of stuff automatically. And one of those things that it does is it adds an extra image layer unnecessarily. This takes up more space, slows down your builds, and just isn't good practice. Even the official Docker documentation says to avoid using add for downloading and copying packages from URLs. Instead, consider using wget or the curl command. This keeps your code simple and clean. Mistake number seven not creating a Docker ignore file. Docker containers need to be small and fast. To decrease the size of your images, create a Docker ignore file so that your image doesn't unnecessarily copy files. More on that here. Mistake number eight, putting the entire application directory in one line. When creating a Docker file, it's not uncommon to see one long and drawn out run command with all of your applications being requested. Please don't do this. This will be detrimental to your build's performance. 
When all these applications are listed on one line, Docker executes them on a per line basis. This means that if you add or change anything, the whole line will be invoked and all of your application's dependencies will have to be reinstalled. Mistake number nine, storing irreplaceable data in a container. Containers can easily be broken, replaced, or destroyed. Think of it like this. If you have multiple hard drives on your computer, it's a good practice to put your apps on one very fast drive and all of your personal photos and videos on another. If you don't do that, you should be doing that. Especially if you know that you'll be making some serious changes to the very fast drive. I think you get the point. Applications running in containers can easily be replaced with subsequent versions. Therefore, if you need to store data, store it in a volume and not in a container. If you find an article online telling you to store your data in a binds mount, just don't do that. Binds mounts have been around since the early days of Docker and are super limited when compared to volumes. Just send it to your volumes. Mistake number 10, setting up two containers to write to the same volume. Pay attention to where your containers write their data. If two or more containers write data on the same volume without setting up some parameters first, your data will probably get corrupted, which is a sad day. Make sure you know where your application is outputting its data while it's running. And that's it. Don't do these 10 things and all the cool developers will be super impressed. If you want to learn more about Docker, check out some of our other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe as we'll be making new videos on the regular. Also, if you're looking for the best cloud-based monitoring tool for Docker, give Semitex a try for free. The link for that is in the description below. Until next time, keep monitoring everybody.